true knowledge is that which informs one about the true nature of God or the higher self. The first requirement of spirituality is nonviolence. The second requirement of spirituality is truthfulness. The third requirement is celibacy. The fourth is controlling one's senses. And the last is the worship of God. One who practices spirituality should not go around collecting material possessions. Before meditating on the true nature of the higher self, one has to seat himself in a proper posture. When the senses are controlled, one goes to heaven and avoids going to hell. The material pursuits are like the strong flow of a river. The soul drowns in it. Pranayama alone is not enough. It has to be supplemented with meditation and chanting. One contemplates the true nature of the higher self. All right, so we're gonna break this down. Uh, it says true knowledge is that which informs one about the true nature of God or the higher self. The first requirement of spirituality or yoga to yoke yourself to that God or that higher self is nonviolence. So we're gonna break this down with the seven, you know, glands, the seven worlds or the seven chakras, like we do in many videos. That first requirement is dealing with the heart chakra, right? Nonviolence, nonviolence. It says the second requirement of spirituality or to yoke yourself to God, yoga, is truthfulness. It's the throat chakra, right? Truthfulness. It says the third requirement is celibacy. Celibacy is the sacral plexus, right? The second chakra, the Swadhisthana chakra. It says the fourth is controlling one's senses. The senses, all five of them are centered around the intu intuitive realm of the chakras, which is the solar plexus, that's the senses. It says, and the last is the worship of God. The worship of God will be the crown chakra, right? The worship of God. It says, one who practices spirituality or is attempting to yoke their soul to God should not go around collecting material possessions. Very key. Material possessions we cannot forget is the root chakra. That's the first chakra. The base of the Muladhara chakra, the first one. That's the chakra for survival. So that's why it's saying if you're trying to yoke yourself to God at these higher realms and trying to practice spirituality or yoga, true spirituality, one should not go around collecting material possessions. It says before meditating, before meditating on the true nature of your higher self, one has to seat oneself in a proper posture. It's so very simple. So uh, there's many different types of meditation, but just on the basic, simple level without any training, without any practice. You need to sit yourself and uh, detach yourself from those five senses. Get, get control over the five senses. Remember, that's the fourth requirement we read earlier. Uh, and so why it says one should not chase material possessions, that's the root chakra. One should not, uh, one should uh, practice celibacy, sacral plexus. One should control their senses, solar plexus. One should practice nonviolence, heart chakra. One should uh, practice truthfulness, throat chakra. So at that point, now you're sitting in meditation so it says before meditating so before you meditate you have to have all of those requirements right before meditating on the true nature of the higher self one has to seat oneself in a proper posture that posture is to be able to be comfortable and not uh attracted to do any of these activities we mentioned above so you can tap within inside of the own uh your own inner worlds and it says when the senses are controlled so when your five senses are under control right one goes to heaven and avoids going to hell. Hell will be the external world and reincarnating and being trapped in lower levels of karma and worse experiences and worse misfortune and worse trauma. But heaven will be to liberate your soul to never die, be reborn, or reincarnate ever again. That's heaven, right? And hell would be to be what? To die, to be reborn, and to reincarnate again. That would be hell. When the senses are controlled, one goes to heaven and avoids going to hell. Material pursuits are like the strong flow of a river. That river is the Shishuna Nadi, or your spine, the blood flow of your spine or your nervous system. That is that river that gives you all of your impulses and desires and your inclinations and, your, and gives you your animal or human biology. What makes you tick? All of your different desires are on the spine. That's the river. But it says material pursuits. When you get on this river and you seek material possessions, it's like a strong flow of a river. It says the soul drowns in it. The soul will drown in that river uh, as it moves and gets trapped under the throat because of lies and untruthfulness. When it gets trapped under the heart because of violence. When it gets trapped under the solar plexus because it loses uh, 
clarity with your five senses uh, when it gets trapped under the sacral plexus because of sexual immorality or because you lose your energy, your prana, through uh, misuse of your sexual activity. Under the root chakra because you're seeking material possessions. And they, pranayama alone is not enough. So pranayama is to control this river and control your, your impulses and your senses. So you never get angry, you never get disturbed, you never get depressed, you never get addictions, you know, getting addicted and craving this or that on, on your, on your uh, spine. Pranayama is the control of your breath, your prana, which should control your mind and which should control your nervous system. And that should be able to help you stay and remain in a trance and enter into the transcendental states or spiritual states. But it says pranayama, meaning breath control, is not enough though. So we need to do it, but it's not enough. It has to be added or supplemented with meditation and chanting, which is called dhyana and japa, meditation and chanting. Uh, why meditation is basically sitting and renouncing activity not doing any activity but using your imagination uh, visualization and all of this is basically your subconscious and the collective unconscious of motifs archetypes symbols which translates to deities thoughts forms and principles that are in your subconscious in your mind in your memory and when you get mastery over that subconscious world you're able to get a better navigate this material world and enter into the spiritual world gracefully so it said it's supplemented by dhyana and japa or meditation and chanting. Now the chanting, the chanting is important is because it's supposed to be a repetitive uh, mantra to be able to keep your mind focused on that principle until it gets retained into your subconscious and it runs automatically. So if you chant a mantra for let's say a week, the rest of the remaining part of that month, you'll have that mantra stuck in your uh, subconscious, in your mind. And it'll be a part of the way you tick and the way that you think. The, the more divine the mantra, the more divine your thoughts will be able to help you navigate through this physical world. It says, then one contemplates on the true nature of the higher self. So from there, the meditation and chanting, now you meditate and contemplate on the true nature of the higher self. And in, that, in those meditations, that's basically you sitting, closing your eyes, and you deal with the implications and the circumstances of what it means of what happens after you die, what happens before you were born, who are you really beyond this physical body, who is all of the different people that you have known, what are all of the circumstances of your life, what is misfortune, what is fortune, what is karma, what is reincarnation, all of these different motifs and concepts should be meditated upon. They tell you do something called Atma Vikara, which is self-inquiry, and you get to the root of who you really are. And you'll be surprised, which most people in the West and most people in the world will be shocked to discover, is that you are that same being that is primordial and that's before creation. Right now, we are living in the dream of that supreme being, or that supreme deity. And that is what contemplation and meditation should help you discover. But if you already have inhibitions and you have doubt before you even get started, then you're already going to be misled and distracted. So you have to have confidence, conviction that you'll be able to discover the biggest mystery that has ever been spoken of or revealed to the world. And you'll be able to discover it on your own through this practice that we just laid out today. Oh yeah, and that mystery is what we would call heaven, the spiritual world, the afterlife, uh, the transcendental worlds, other dimensions, higher dimensions, etc., etc. There's many names and many cultures and many different ways to describe it. 